And that's why, class, cats are the most powerful, effective predator there is. Have you ever seen a cat pick up something heavy? Astronaut and Apple. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Time to get brolic in the yard, as they say. Today, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite exercises, the deadlift. And this is something I would call the king of all exercises. Uh, it separates the, the boys and girls from men and women, if you will. This is one of the best movements for building strength, uh, building a lot of hypertrophy, and just demanding a lot of respect in the gym when executed properly. So let's break into this and talk about what does proper execution look like, okay? First off, let's talk proper positioning. Uh, let's determine how wide our stance should be through the feet. A simple way to do this is simply to jump. Uh, your natural state when you jump is going to give you sort of that proper hip, knee, ankle alignment for maximal force production. So step back from the bar, take a couple of jumps, look down at your feet, how wide are they? That's roughly where you should be for your conventional deadlifting, about the same width as you would use to jump vertically for a maximal effort. I would start a couple inches away from the bar depending on your leverages, uh, and that's basically just gonna be over your mid foot. That's gonna keep everything nice and balanced. Your hands are gonna be gripped below the shoulders, a little bit outside of the legs. Finally, make sure that your shoulders are back on top of the bar, not over in front here. So watch this correction, perfect. All right, let's talk about improper position. Here we see the hips too high, the butt stays up, and essentially only the hip is hinging, the knee is not bending. This is what they might call a Romanian deadlift or a stiff leg deadlift. You want to drop the hips and use that leg drive, shall we call it, uh, basically the hinging of the hips to put more strain onto the quadriceps. Here we see that the low back is arching excessively, some hyperextension in the lower lumbar. And the error here, pretty obvious, the error here is that it's gonna hurt your low back and you're gonna always be dealing with submaximal loading because it's mechanically very ineffective, very inefficient. This is also gonna cause your toes to peel up, your weight to be centered onto your heel, and you to lean back excessively will cause you to lose your balance potentially. So make sure you're centered over the middle of your foot. Okay, now this one here is a little bit harder to identify, so I've slowed the footage down. Watch the bar come out and around the knee and then connect back into the mid thigh. So the bar's coming too far out in front. Instead of pulling the knees back so that that bar can be in a straight line that's more effective, you're able to handle more loading safely. She's actually pushing the bar out in front of her and bringing it back into the hip. And this is pretty common for beginners, especially if they're doing a set of three to five to eight. You know, you're, you're doing more than a single or a double. That bar style starts to travel way out in front of you, and it can be tough to control. Having scrapes up your shin or bumping and bruising your knee isn't always a bad thing. It means you know what you're doing more than likely, and you're keeping that bar in a good straight path. So make sure that, that bar is going straight up and down. Here we're gonna see uh, an excessively arched lower back right from the get-go. People getting in too tight in their back, not bracing the core, chest and head come up early. That's gonna cause a lot of pain. You're gonna herniate something, all right? Uh, and here, of course, the classic cat back deadlift of 2018. Boo, all rounded over. You see a lot of people pull this way. Their back is weak and they're simply overloading muscularities that they don't have. And here we see just a lack of proper positioning all around. People not taking the time on the setup, grabbing the bar awkwardly, their knees aren't in the right position, their legs are too wide, their hands are too narrow. Make sure you find what works for you, what's comfortable, and practice that position. Here we're gonna see a little bit of a front angle. This is what the deadlift should look like. The hands are right outside the knees. The knees, of course, not unlike the squat, pointed out. They're not pointed forward and they're certainly not collapsing in towards each other in what is known as a valgus knee position. These knees point out, forcing the glutes to fire. Deadlifting is one of the best exercises for the glutes. You wanna build a booty, get that conventional deadlift up to two, two and a half times your body weight, and I guarantee it's gonna be looking tight and nice. So you see here, good knee bend, good hip bend. We're using that leg drive. I'm not just keeping the hips high. And here's a little bit different angle here. We wanna see the shoulders over the top of the bar, not in front of the bar, but over the top. And that's easier once it gets a little bit heavier, but a lot of people will get tipped too far forward trying to use their low back, and they're not sitting down into the lift, sitting their hips down and back, using that leg drive. I always tell people at the bottom of the movement where you just slip off of the bar, you should fall over backwards. You're building up tension, 
pulling the flex out of the bar, and that can only happen when those hips are seated down. Okay, here we see that classic double overhand grip. Deadlifting is great for building that, uh, that grip strength, building that nervous system stimulation. Okay, so here I'm just gonna be working up. These are deficit deadlifts, and that's a really, really great way to enforce positive deadlift patterning. You're forced to sit your hips down, you're forced to keep those knees out, and doing sets of five, sets of 10, even triples or so, really, really good here. So I'm just working up in weight. I think we've got about 275 here or so. But this is essentially what the deadlift should look like. And if you're having a hard time getting into position, maintaining position, your back is really hurting, start out light, start out about 60 to 75% of a one rep max and do these deficit pulls, whether it's off a, a plate that you're setting down or a little plyo box or anything else, anything from about one to three inches is gonna be huge for your deadlift gains. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you have any questions at all about deadlifting or anything else fitness related, be sure and leave a comment and I will get back to you as soon as I can.